Zoom meetings. Um, what a pleasure. Thank you very much uh, for attending. I'm just going to um, share that my name is Vanita Dillon. Uh, I am um, the director for new students and uh, parent programs, family programs, which makes me a liaison with each and every one of you. I'm accessible and available at any time you need to connect. Um, it's been a pleasure and I wanted to just say that to get here with your student takes putting education as a priority and you've done that. And I'd like for all of you to put your hands together and applaud that. precious human. So thank you for trusting us. And one last commitment that we'd like to ask of you today, which is please remind your student to advocate for themselves. We're here. All they need to do is ask us for what they need, when they need it, and we will be there for them. So help them advocate for themselves, please. Um, that's all I got. I have wonderful colleagues here who are going to share with you their presentation and starting is Karen Yoder. My name is Mackenzie Fink, sorry. I'm, I'm wearing a red shirt right now because I'm a cadet leader on campus. I am the MPM Company Operations Officer, an RHO in Maritime North, and a Community Engagement Officer. advisor of our student government here on campus and I also oversee our um, students basic needs program here. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kong Meng and I am a senior FET uh, lead mentor for EOP and RHO here on campus. Hello everybody, my name is Max Jones. I am the ASCMA, which is Associated Students California Maritime Academy President. I am a junior mechanical engineering license student, and I'm, in, I'm going to be, I'm also a midshipman in the SSOP program here on campus. And the cadet housing director this year. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kick it off for our group. Um, not only do these two wonderful cadets um, work at the end, but also um, there are many that you're going to meet throughout the journey here at, at Cal Maritime are cadet athletes. Um, I have a wonderful opportunity of joining the staff here in July of 2020, and I come to work every single day with a smile, and a lot of it has to do with your children. Um, bringing them here to this campus has been a tremendous opportunity, and that sense of belonging really starts with creating an opportunity for them to get involved. So I'm going to share with you, and I know the, the print is a little bit on the small side, so I want to make sure that if you um, don't capture everything today, I have a one-pager that talks more about our particular department for you. Um, so we want them to find that healthy balance. We are one of the fittest universities, and we want to obtain that, if not be the top 25, if not top 10. I'm competitive, so I am number chasing, right? So we want to make sure that we find that. Um, we have numerous opportunities. Um, located in our department and opportunities within intercollegiate athletics, recreation, intramurals, and then we of course support um, our sport clubs on campus with Josie's help. So I just, I want you to, to kind of share in, um, we have access to the weight room and cardio room. Both of those are located in the PIAC, but we also have a gym on the TSGB. Um, so those of you who have um, your uh, son or daughter that are going on a cruise that first summer, um, it mirrors a lot of what's in the PF gym, um, including that cardio room. The second thing is they're going to have full access to intramurals. We want them to get involved. 
Maybe they are looking for that activity on Thursday nights or Tuesday nights due to their class load. Have them approach um, our associate director of athletics for recreation and murals. Let's start a team um, in whatever type of sport or activity um, that they are interested in. Lap swimming currently um, is open right now from 11 to 1. We're also going to be opening up after that second week of the semester in the morning time for those morning swimmers from 6 to 7.30. Um, of course, we want to make sure they get out in time and get to formation Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But maybe they don't have class until 9 o'clock so they can get a good hour and a half or two hours in on those other days. We have, we're also going to be opening up Open Gym. We have a full gym. Um, where they picked up their CVAC and all of their uniforms, as well as on Zimmery Gym. That's where the service, career services is located. So it's like a half gym. We also offer uh, volleyball. That's where our yoga and our spin classes are held. Um, and then we're also hiring a variety of fitness instructors for martial arts, uh, boot camp, um, and a wide variety of different fitness trends that are um, popular. Um, we also offer physical education classes for academic credit. Um, they get one unit uh, for being in an intercollegiate class, uh, very similar to other universities, but we also have How to Sail. Um, we're also partnering, partnering with Oceanography. So if this is something that they would like to take an elective unit, we do offer physical education um, classes. And then again, as I stated, we are supporting our club sports. So if, if you didn't have a chance to spend, this is a wonderful afternoon evening shot of the Pia. That's the pool. Um, you might have walked by it, but you have so much going on today. It's a beautiful infinity pool, uh, full size. Um, that is the gym. It was covered today and of course had all the sea bag um, uh, items in it. Uh, a main gym, auxiliary gym, we kind of talked about that. The faculty offices, my office is located on the second floor in the back hallway behind the cardio room. So if your son or daughter needs um, anyone in my particular team, please just have them um, come up on the second floor uh, in those back faculty, faculty offices. So our intercollegiate opportunities include 15 sports. Um, we have women's soccer, men's soccer, and rugby. Their home facility is Bogner Field. If you haven't had a chance to go up, um, up by Upper Res and McAllister, that is where our um, turf field is located. It has two lanes. It's not an oval track like you might have it at other, um, at other institutions or at the high school, um, but it's more of a running, um, walking type lane, but it's not a formalized local track. Uh, we also have um, uh, a satellite athletic training room. We added that in last year, so we have a full service athletic training room in PIAC, but we also have a secondary one uh, that supports actually our intramurals and recreation activities in the evening. And then um, we also host commencement. So in four or maybe three wonderful years, that's where you'll be coming and seeing your son or daughter walk across the stage with their degree. You might wonder, well, where do those 15 teams compete in? We compete in the NAI. Some of you might be familiar with the NC2A. We compete in the NAI in eight out of our 15 sports. Um, so uh, we are a member of the CalPAC uh, conference, which encompasses the inside of the site entire state of California into Arizona. Um, we also sponsor uh, our crew team, both men's and women, and we sponsor that through U.S. Rowing. Um, National Collegiate Rugby, we have men's rugby 15s, we also have club 7s, and we also have women's rugby club. Um, and then the um, ISCA is what our national champions compete in, uh, which is our keelboat uh, offshore team, which are current national champions, and we also have a DNE sailing program. And then the CWPA is where our, our two water polo teams compete in. So just to give you a little a snapshot of last year, we had 224 cadet athletes um, compete, go so through the complete um, eligibility process um, and compete in either the fall or the spring. We have 309 of those um, that started in the large room at the beginning of the semester. Um, and it was roughly 25.8% of our student body last year. We're looking to increase that number um, and have over 400 cadet, interested cadet athletes on Tuesday at 4 o'clock in the PX so we can talk to them about all these wonderful opportunities. Our co uh, collective cumulative GPA for all cadet athletes last year was at 3.1. 
So I want to celebrate that. That's something that's a great achievement. Not only are they putting in between 18 to 22 units, they're also putting in at least 18 to 20 hours of training, practice, and then of course you add in the competition. <coughs> Uh, there's multiple ways outside of um, the class, or excuse me, the teams that they can be involved in, and that is through um, being a part of our CCA, that is our Council of Cadet Athletes. Once they become a member of the team, we select two per team, and that is the leadership core um, that works with our administration to make sure that we are advocating for what they want their college experience to be. And then I would love to celebrate that we are back-to-back -back perfect score, only one of 10 <coughs> institutions in the entire nation for NAIA with a perfect score of the champions of character. Um, and we just received that second back-to-back um, -back year just last month. Um, so we're really excited about that, and we're gonna have a special ceremony, but that really comes with the character of the student athletes who have come before your son or daughter. So this is what they're coming into, of just the level of decorum uh, and really certain leadership of what our cadet athletes stand for. So there's a whole wide variety. I talked a little bit about some of those national recognition, not only being champions of character gold status, the perfect score. We're also the reigning national champions for Kill Boat. We won the Kennedy Cup last year. We won the Harvard Cup. So this is our fourth national championship in our sailing program. Um, we started women's golf, celebrating uh, the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Uh, which added to be our 15th sport within our department. We not only had a national NAIA player of the, of the week, uh, but she also broke uh, CalPAC conference records as well as school records, and that is our board commander, Alicia Porter. So we just have a wide variety of, of things, um, and we host a wide variety of events on our campus as well. This is a last picture, and I know that the font is really small, I want to put another plug out there and encourage your son or daughter to come on Tuesday at 4 o'clock to PAC so they can meet all of the head coaches. Um, and this is a picture after our team won the national championship um, against some of the top biggest Division I schools in the country. Um, and this captures it right here. Um, and then there's our, all of our social media opportunities to, to follow the field haulers when your son or daughter hopefully bring home another national championship. So thank you so much. Hello. Hi, everyone. I am Joellen. As I stated earlier, representing Office of Community Engagement. Uh, there's a couple different, uh, excuse me, a couple different uh, programs that I want to talk to you about. In just a minute. This is just your entertainment. <laughs> While we're working on getting that one up and live for community engagement, I want to talk to you about one of the programs that is called the Cadet Community Connection. And some of your, how many of your students are already, are your cadets are in that program? Woo! Yes? I know you're out there. We have, we have a little over a dozen students that are already in that program, and maybe they're in it and you didn't realize it, but that's a uh, really nice uh, uh, program that links up our incoming freshmen with a local family, not to live with them, not a traditional international host family, but just to help get them acclimated to the area. Um, and as you see here, the little graphic is can't see it very well, but the idea is 360 degrees of support. So family back home, uh, family here on campus, and um, also there, which is the campus community, and then from a local family as well. So that's the idea of it. This is uh, going into our 10th year of the program. It actually was the brainchild of our president. Uh, he has family that he participates in the, um, at the Naval Academy. All of the midshipmen are put into their uh, campus their campus's uh, sponsor program, they call it. So this is our version of that. It's an opt-in only. Um, I know moms usually want their student, oh yes, let's have them do this, but please let it be the student's idea. We reopen the application process, uh, the application today. So if they'd like to go through the process, it's an application, it's a background check, all the families are background checked, and uh, we welcome uh, any of your cadets that would like to participate in that. <laughs> And I just wanted to show you uh, the, some of the 
Uh, just some of the pictures. So this is to, uh, specifically for your cadets freshman year, officially, uh, but unofficially we hope they make connections for the entire time that they're here. So that's why our little um, slogan, if you will, is uh, that people in, are in our life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. So the reason, obviously, they came to Cal Maritime, they're in this program. The season can be the entire time they are here, but the lifetime. So as you see from some of these pictures, there are uh, cadets that have stayed connected with their host family the entire time they here, uh, are here and came to commencement um, as well. And then we have ones that have attended the weddings and the christening. So it's really a nice um, support and again, that sense of belonging is what this program is really all about. Uh, so this is the what I mentioned, um, that the application will be open today, and that uh, this is where you can uh, find it. And um, again, moms, don't fill this out for your cadet, please have them go to this website. Uh, we'll be talking more about uh, this with them later in the week as well. So uh, the Office of Community Engagement, I'm not going to read you all these words, I know there's lots of words, but really the key point here, it just goes uh, along with what we were trying to do with our Cadets, cadets here is turn them into or help them become leaders. So that's really what our vision and mission are all about, supporting that as well. So getting them involved in their local community is very important. So they're not all studies all the time um, here on campus. It's about broadening their horizons and realizing that even just a little bit uh, that they go out into the community can go a long way to not only making a positive impact, but there's benefits um, for them as well. So um, the next slide we have here is just what we call ourselves, a community impact crew. All the, uh, the students get these t-shirts when we go out into the community and the, the community really, really, really embraces our cadets. So and as much as you can encourage them to participate, we want you to. So these are just some of the fun pictures of things that we've done. It's everything from a coastal cleanup that's on campus that is service overall. And then we do one out of the community as well. And as you can see, we uh, do work with our historic ships. Those are our nonprofit community partners. And then funding, you can see them dressing their salt and peppers, uh, marching in a parade, and they're engaging with the community in that way. So um, there, there really is, again, so many different opportunities. And we really encourage them to do that. Just FYI for you, this yellow card uh, is in each of their rooms. I think I was told it was put in the shower caddy. We will be doing um, nine different service projects as part of orientation on Friday. So we, uh, the students, the cadets, have the opportunity to sign up for one that they would like to sign up for. They're all great projects, but maybe something resonates with them more than another. So please um, remind them that this is there. We'll be talking to them as well. But if they don't know by the end of the day on Wednesday, we have to put them into a project. So this is their opportunity to sign up early. It's a little QR code. Um, and then finally, I want to tell you about the exciting uh, exciting team that was created this past year and now we're even better and stronger this year. It's our 2022-23, only the second year of a service leadership team. So it's meant to go along with our other cadet leaders here. And um, one of the young ladies is here with us today and I wanted to have her just say a few words to you about her experience and how she uh, connects with all of the cadets. Uh, she is Mackenzie Fink. I'll let her introduce herself, but she is our, she was our, um, oh, let me just say the structure. So we have uh, two student, uh, cadet leaders, pardon me, cadet leaders. Mackenzie is one of them as our operations officer for this team. And then the other young man is our cadet representative. If you stop into the resources fair, he was there speaking to everyone. And then we have four representatives that are for each of the majors and athletics. We work closely with our um, athletics team. In fact, we can see we had that uh, position last year. We're very close to getting our teams out of and out of the community. That our athletics director, we really are, you know, have this great uh, relationship with our uh, athletics teams to support that endeavor. Um, but I let Mackenzie tell you a little more. Yeah, so as Joan said, I'm the operations officer for this team. So I work with the company leaders as well as the athletic leaders, just making sure they have all the support they need to create events and reach out to nonprofit organizations, reach out to them, find times that work for us so we can get our cadets out there in the community. So basically, I probably at one point, at one point or another will talk to all of your um, cadet, cadets, yeah, 
Um, so I'll reach out to them, try and get them out in the community, get them involved. There's a lot of great organizations out there that do a lot of things for our community and they just, they need lending hands and it's my job to get our cadets there, so yeah. <laughs> My name is Josie Alexander, and like I said, I advise our student government on campus, which Max is going to talk a little bit more about. Um, I also do our basic needs program here, and what that encompasses is we have a food pantry on campus. So if a student feels they want to have take some food um, back to their room to be able to microwave at a later time, we all know that most students work either on campus or off campus, and sometimes the hours in the dining hall, especially on Saturdays and Sundays may conflict with their work schedule. So they can come down to the pantry anytime, Monday through, actually, Monday through Friday, um, and they can take a bag of groceries and take it back up to their room to be able to have um, some food for a time that they need it. We also do pop-up events um, where we give away fresh veggies, salads, fruits, um, on Thursdays, so it's another opportunity for students to be able to take some of that um, produce that we get free or at a very discounted rate back to their room to keep them healthy. I also work with students to um, help them get onto CalFresh. So if a student is in a certain program here like EOP or their financial aid awards them a federal work study, they're eligible to get onto CalFresh. So I work with the students here and um, go through their application. I also speak with the county, Solano County, to verify their information, and then uh, the students is able to get those type of benefits. I also do student activities on campus, and that kind of goes hand in hand with our associated students, ASCMA, who funds most of the activities. And we have um, a broad bunch of activities. There's usually two or three different activities that happen during the week. There's at least one or two activities that happen on the weekends, and so the associate students will purchase tickets or take students off campus at a very discounted rate. So if a ticket price costs, uh, we'll say like $30, the student will only pay about $10 to $12. We provide the transportation to get them off campus, or we'll bring in outside vendors to do some other fun stuff on campus to keep your your cadet entertained and to also get them um, meeting other cadets that maybe aren't in their major and outside um, their residence hall. We're a small campus, but sometimes when you're going to classes with the same students over and over again, um, it's always good to meet somebody new. Um, and so that's my role here at Cal Maritime. I, uh, I don't do as much as Josie, because I'm still a student, but um, I'm a lead mentor for EOP, uh, so Educational Opportunity Program. So over here, we, uh, as a lead mentor, I uh, oversee other mentors, um, and then we all oversee uh, some students, EOP students. Uh, we make sure that the students uh, have what they need, for example, books. Uh, they also have like, a stipend for the bookstores. Uh, we also do programs here like bowling or road courses or the other day for Summer Bridge. Uh, we also have a program for them to like uh, start earlier than other students so that they can get used to uh, uh, the campus first or uh, get to talk to advisors one-on-one um, -on -one and learn about financial aid or uh, other uh, campuses uh, programs here that uh, to support them. Um, we also uh, meet with them uh, twice a month and make sure that the, uh, the, fresh, the freshmen that are in EOP are doing well in classes, uh, making sure that they feel supported or feel included um, in the community and we also just like uh, come up with fun stuff for them to do and um, we do a lot of activities uh, with other programs as well and we work with EOP and uh, if we have enough fun we also invite their friends uh, to come in and uh, probably do a barbecue, bowling or a movie, uh, so uh, yeah, that's what we do uh, for your feet. Alright, hello everybody again. Um, so as mentioned, my name is Max Jones, I'm the 
ASCMA presidents for this upcoming school year. And I know you're all waiting to hear what is ASCMA. Well, it is uh, this campus's Associated Student Program. So similar to most high schools, they have an Associated Student Body. That's kind of what ASCMA is on campus here. It's uh, fully student ran, as Jersey said. She's our advisor, and she's really the only kind of staff person who oversees everything. We have weekly meetings in the top room, which is on the back side of the administration building. They're every Monday at five, and uh, we cover pretty much anything that comes up on campus. We kind of hear about through our senators um, and through liaisons from various organizations. Um, so for leadership, we have two senators per school, um, school of whatever. <laughs> um, so underclass and upper class engineering, underclass and upper class or deck and MPM, and then the last one, which I can't remember, letters and sciences for oceanography. So there's six senators, and then the exec team, myself, VP, um, and then a few other people. Um, we make up the ASCMA board, um, and we have, like I said, weekly meetings. Um, all the CSUs, all 23 of them, have, a have associated student organizations, and they all send four representatives to the Cal State Student Association, uh, which has monthly meetings, and the next one is gonna be down in Long Beach. So myself and three other students are gonna be going down to Long Beach, representing Maritime, and moreover, representing about half a million students um, statewide, and voting on things that are going to get sent to California State legislat Legislature, um, which are voted on, and all that stuff. So it's really like a pipeline to you know, we are, we're a small campus of Maritime, but the four people and myself, I'm on the board of directors of that organization, I have as much voting power as the, like, CSU uh, San Diego State, which has a huge campus. Um, so students can get involved in that stuff, um, just reach out. As Jersey said, we do activities, we do probably four or five a week. Um, those vary from, like, bringing food trucks on campus so that your students aren't just eating mess food all the time, even though it's great, um, and ch shifting it up. And then there's sometimes events on the weekend, like paintball. Um, we've taken students to the San Francisco Botanical Gardens last year. Um, and so yeah, there's stuff happening all the time, and our AS Instagram is really showcasing what's going on in the week and when it happens. Um, if your student wants to get involved outside of the classroom and doesn't want to go to events, we have, we had about 25 active clubs last year, ranging from like a math club to a weightlifting club. Um, so if your student is really passionate about something and they want to do it, it's a super easy process to come to the meeting and start a club. And it can be pretty much anything. Um, they just need to find some friends and get it going. Um, and I think that that's it. Thank you. I am the cadet housing director once again, and that basically means that I'm working with the housing staff and what we call RHOs on campus. RHOs are stands for residence hall officer. At other colleges, we call it an RA, like resident assistant. And basically, what my staff is doing is they're going to be a supporting role for your cadet in the residence halls. No matter what residence hall they're staying at, we have resident RHOs that are. Um, Basically, uh, they're going to be watching over slash assisting your cadet with whatever needs they may have. So that could look like accidentally locking themselves out at 3 a.m. We will be there. One call and they will get back into the building where it's safe and sound and back into their room. Uh, we also, my staff will be providing hall-wide uh, events for the cadets to go to where they can go have fun, maybe get off campus, have food. It could be a social event. It could be an educational event like learning how to fill out your FAFSA. Uh, it can really range between anything, and the RHOs have been doing this for, we have brand new RHOs, and we also have RHOs that have been doing it for over two years. So we got a lot of experience uh, with our staff, and another component of the job that they do for your cadets is something we're calling intentional conversations. Um, so each RHO will intentionally reach out and have a one-to-one -one with each, uh, each cadet on campus just to check in, make sure they're doing okay, see if there's any needs that aren't being met. Because overall, as the housing director and as a housing department, 
Uh, our job and our goal is really to make sure that this campus and the residence halls are both a safe, healthy, and inclusive space for all of our cadets. Um, so that's basically what me and my staff are aiming for. That's what we strive to do. And we do that every day by showing up and talking to our residents and talking to our cadets, making sure that they're enjoying where they're at and they're not finding them what, what will, help, will help them be happy. Um, one last thing that my staff and myself do is we serve as something we call like being on duty or on call. So when your student does, unfortunately, will have them lock themselves out. We will be there, but also if they're having a crisis, I, um, they're not feeling too well. Maybe there's like a mental situation. It can be a health situation. If for any reason, anything's going on where they need immediate assistance, there will be an RHO as well as a professional staff on call at all times during the academic year where they can call that number and they will immediately have assistance to come help them and get them the support they need. That's it for me. So we have a few minutes, wonderful job panel. Um, if there's any questions from um, any of you, please. So the question was if we have women's rugby. Yes, it is a club sport and they um, compete in the spring. Um, it is actually coached by our men's rugby coach and staff. So that is sponsored and they practice it on our campus. And I don't have the schedule for this upcoming year.